Yeah, yeah, check one, two, check one, two. Is this mic on? Is this mic on? Hey, listen, man. It's the one and only trendsetter DJ Sense, and you're listening to Cocktails. Dirty Discussions with Kiki and Medina Monroe. Yeah. Today's cocktail is called the manly drink. So the ingredients you need to make the manly drink is some gin, two ounces of gin, mm. one ounce of fresh lemon juice. I know. I, we all know. Gin makes gin. you sin. One teaspoon of sugar or a half ounce of simple syrup and some soda water, soda water to fill. So you're going to add all the ingredients besides the soda water to a shaker and shake vigorously. Pour into a glass of ice. Fill the rest of the glass with the soda water, garnish with a slice of lemon, and add a straw. And that is a manly ass drink. Yeah, it is. Anything with gin, it just makes me nervous. Mm -hmm. um, I used to try and drink like gimlets when I would go hang out with my aunt. And then one day I just tapped out. I was like, I don't know why I'm trying to keep up with you. You've been doing this since you were 12. So anyway, <laughs> welcome back to Cocktails Dirty Discussions, you guys. Hey, y'all. How was your week? My week has been good. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just getting closer to God and learning Medina. How was your week? It's been great. Um, spend some time with some family and friends, and that always feels good. Mm -hmm. uh, we won't spend a lot of time catching up today because this week we are joined by a guest. Today we have Rod Minker with us. Hello. Hey, how y'all doing? Hey, doing well. Rod. How are you? Welcome to Cocktails. I feel so intimidated. Y'all got like these hey voices, and I'm like, <laughs> am I supposed to do this too? Like, what the hell is this? I don't have that in me, but this is great. Well, you though. just called us real niggas, so we had to like girl it up. Wait a minute. I didn't real say that. You don't, you don't have proof of that. Okay, so let's not, uh, let's not do that. But, yeah. They might have been recording. You oh, never know. Oh, might have been a little don't, blooper. Don't. Okay. <laughs> so, quick backstory I met Rod through Tiffany. We had Tiffany on the show also. Tiffany Lorenz is a YouTuber. You do a lot of work with Tiffany. Yes. And um, I was in one of the skits with you. Remember I was the yes, crazy she was. mama? Yes, was the crazy was the mama. Coach. Yes. And Tiffany's boyfriend threw a uh, surprise birthday party for her for her at Apartment 4B. And I went, Aww. it was really, really cute. Beautiful. They have this really cute little private room at the bottom. Yes. Have you been in there? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Mm -hmm. Did a really great job. And uh, me and my boyfriend sat next to Rod and his wife. And we just yes. ended up having the great conversations. Oh and he was like, you got to have me on the show. I was like, we definitely have to. That was so long ago. Oh my gosh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> Finally, you're here. I ooh. let's not do it. Let's just yeah, it was a while ago. Try. It was a while ago. It was, it was last year though. It was last year. It was definitely it was last year. year but we got you here. We Rod here. is a comedian, yes. content creator. Yes. Tell the people about yourself. Yeah, actor, comedian, uh, comedian first, uh, acting. I do a lot of content with Tiffany and the the old school. Uh, they were the ATL verse, but everybody broke up like the Temptations. <gasps> yes. Yeah. Yes. So uh, so but yes. I'm I'm the guy that was cool with everybody. So I get the called ATL what verse. So they no. were like the top content creators in Atlanta during the mm. pandemic. I didn't and, know you were part of that group no i wasn't in the verse i was like the recurring character okay you I knew it. I, I was like cockroach on the cosby show i kept coming in kept coming in <laughs> okay and, 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 and i'm just so good with improv it just it just worked i worked good with everybody so and then when they broke up i still was good i was able to work with everybody so that worked out yeah. and then i'm currently on tour with uh carl anthony Payne, which i might know him as cole from martin yes Come on! Yeah, so I'm on his tour, and then uh, yeah, man. So that's that's what I do, man. I do a little, little this, little that. Are you happy? Yeah. I'm very happy yeah. internally. Yes, internally, very happy, man. I'm in a good space. Okay, good. Well, um, get happier because we're gonna play a quick game of I'm curious to know real quick. Oh, this about me. Mm -hmm. okay. So Kiki and I came up with a card game. It's called I'm Curious okay, to Know. That's it right there. That's the card. We, if you wonder why we're not grabbing the deck, it's because we now we curated these cards, so we have them memorized. Oh, yeah. Lord, I don't so. know about you, but I have quite a few of them so memorized. So y'all save it to yeah. just set people up for disaster. Let's go. Yes. So okay. you want to go first? No, you go ahead. Okay, Rod. Okay. I'm curious to know, what is the most romantic gift you've ever given someone? Ooh, the most romantic gift. I I've actually think it's what's someone. the best gift. Ooh, let me see. The best gift I've ever given someone outside of a proposal. Um, because that is a nice gift. That is a nice gift. The answer is going to be yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. outside of that. Um, and if it's a man doing the proposing, because these women been proposing I hate lately, that, I hate that by the way. I think that is the lamest, stupidest, most Same. embarrassing thing ever. I've been at a restaurant where it happened, and I was embarrassed. <gasps> and what I thought you I said, ma'am, stand up, please. Yes. <laughs> get up. Stand up. Have some dignity. Stand up for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to get sidetracked. I was very upset. I almost ruined the whole thing. They had the music, the DJ stopped, and dude didn't even say yes. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. Mm. I get secondhand embarrassment. Mm. Um, there's two gifts. There's two gifts, I think. I'm a I'm a, a, a moments person. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think the first one would be, uh, so me and my wife met working on cruise ships, as I told you, but I know she doesn't know. So we worked mm -hmm. on Disney Cruise Lines. Mm. 
And uh, before we got married, she moved here. She was from Queens, New York. She moved here. And uh, what I did for the first birthday she had on land, uh, I kind of like stalked her like comments and likes of people that were coming on her that lived near. And then I started a group chat with all of them. And then I rented this space at this restaurant. Uh, she loves Asian food. This Asian restaurant. I can't remember the name at this point because I hate Asian food. It makes me sick. But anyway, but for her, wow. I sucked it up. Yeah, I all of it. chicken, little bourbon chicken. Yeah, all of it just makes me just. But she loves Asian food. That's her thing. So mm-hmm. I got like maybe fifteen of her friends that mm-hmm. some of them I hadn't even met before. I just seen they would come in like, hey, if you're in the Atlanta area, I'm going to throw her a surprise dinner. It's her first, you know, birthday here on land. You know, she's away from home. She's moved from another state. So I want all y'all to be there. So yeah. all of them came. It was like 25, 30 of us. And uh, I got her there probably. I told them to get there at 630. We got there at 7 o'clock on the dot. They all had the flash bombs ready when she walked in. And boom, it was like surprise. And then the ones that couldn't be there, we set up a Zoom for them to be watching too. So I feel like that, that was is That is so, so sweet. Special. Yes. That's a testimony too. If he wants to, he will. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes Do y'all hear was. that, ladies? That's writing in your advice you know, <laughs> right now. If he wants to, he will. Because let me tell you, it really that ain't no work. excuse. You can, work. So, but it wasn't that hard, right? Uh, I mean, like you had. It to, wasn't hard, but because like, you just had to reach out. Yeah, because you know, you know, girls, how y'all be when a dude that y'all don't know getting y'all DM. Y'all always think the first. You know, is he flirting? What's going on? Ain't but then I'm sure you to, got but right to the message. It. Yeah, yeah, I got you right to it. Hey, get to the point. I know you no, don't hey, know how me, you but, doing? You know, yes. I'm and then she probably had that one main friend that's like, okay, let me help you because I want to see. I want you. I Correct. Want this yeah, yeah, to yeah, Go yeah. right. I got you. Yeah, it was perfect. Wanted to. He would. Was she your girlfriend at this point? She was my fiance at this point. Okay. I had just proposed. No, no, she was only the girlfriend. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I don't remember actually. I'm sorry. Okay, it's okay. We have. I don't remember actually. It's, 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 well, it get, whatever. It, it get fuzzy after a couple of years. It get a little fuzzy. I think. Yeah. I, I feel like she was. We were engaged. We weren't married yet. Mm-hmm. But I want to say. Ooh, that I don't. Don't quote me. I don't. Did I can't you remember. love working on the Disney? Cruise I line? absolutely loved working on this. Show. Did you sing Disney songs? I wasn't a singer, so I did not. You were. What'd a you comedian? do? I was the adult MC, which okay. their technical name for that is a club host, but it's mm-hmm. equivalent to if you go on Carnival Norwegian or Celebrity. What the cruise director is doing, mm-hmm. that's what I was doing on Disney. I was doing all the adult stuff, the adult trivias, the adult comedy the per- show. That one guy you see all the time. That I've one guy you see on all cruise. the adults see. But see, what Disney <laughs> does that other cruises don't, they have a kid area where you can just drop your kids off. They have a watch, and you have a watch. And they can buzz you if something's wrong, there's an emergency. But you can drop your kids off and pretend you don't have kids for the entire day. What? Yes, what? and then it's you like can go. Care? Yeah, it's like, it's like a daycare. They snack? And- oh, they feed them. They take them to lunch. They take them to breakfast. All of that. Wow. You drop them off and you walk away and then they come hang with me so they can get drunk. They can party. We have dance parties and the kids aren't allowed in the area where I host it. Mm-hmm. So they literally can bring their kids. Have, a real they, adult they can area. have a kiddie Disney area little party and then they can come and have an adult party with me. Mm-hmm. So they will be with me from like five o'clock in the afternoon until two o'clock in the morning. Carnival mm-hmm. needs to do. I'm, I, I've only been on carnival cruises and oh. I'll never go on another because them little kids, it's like every child. Oh, bro. That's yes. why I've never been. One of the many reasons why I've never been on any cruise because I'm afraid of that and I and the food. There's a cruise that um, I'm going I would on do this Virgin. year. And Virgin is, Virgin is yes. the good. That's the one I saw on TikTok and they said, it's no kids allowed. Right. No it's adult. Oh, none at all. I didn't know that. No. Not allowed at all. I'm Don't for a show on Virgin. But they have kids. Virgin called me back. Okay. I'm waiting. I've been <laughs> waiting. I sent my stuff. Go ahead. Just want to do okay. shameless plug. Go ahead. Okay. Um, next one. <laughs> next question. What do you consider husband and wife only um, duties or Ooh, things? Husband and wife only duties. Mm-hmm. So like basically gender roles in the household. Or benefits. Husband and wife benefits. First mm-hmm. thing, first thing, the pillow talk is amazing. Let's let's start right there. Mm-hmm. You know, it's stuff that happens on that pillow that will never leave the house. I love pillow uh, talk. I'm 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 not old school with stuff like that. I'm like if you got if you have the capacity to do it, do it. You know, like I travel a lot, so I'm gonna be gone the most. But when I'm not traveling and I'm home, if the, the if something's dirty, the house, the kitchen, I'm gonna handle it because I have time. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Uh, so I'm not really on the quote unquote gender roles, I guess, when it comes to stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Now I'm gonna do the manly stuff. The car, mm-hmm. I got that. I'm doing the oil changes. I'm doing the washing. I'm doing the brakes. I'm mm-hmm. doing the mechanical stuff. But what uh, about when it comes to the seriousness of the relationship? Like, not just man and wife, but like, okay, well, I will do this for somebody I'm dating, or I would only do this for somebody I'm married to. I'm not. Ooh, okay. So, like, in that sense of it. Ooh, okay. All right. So, <laughs> now he's like, I, now wait a minute. <laughs> I actually, no, no. So, it's a couple things, but this, I actually talked to Medina about this at the birthday party. Uh, there's this thing I call uh, tough talks. And I think I told you, I said, where you have to risk an hour to save a week. Mm -hmm. So what this does in your relationship with your communication, there's always something tough that's going to come up in your relationship that you need to handle. 
But this happens in all your relationships. This happens in your friendships, your businesses, but most in your relationship because that's the person you talk to the most mm-hmm. out of anybody else. So I say sacrifice that hour to save your week. There's a time we're going to sit down. We're going to have this tough talk. It's going to be it's going to suck for this hour, but it's going to save our week. Mm-hmm. And why that is so important to me because I feel like that hour and the average relationships we skip it. You know, I'll talk about that later. Oh, it's not that big of a deal. I'm gonna hold on to it or I'll save it for later. I don't want to save it for later. Let's get that junk out right now so we can go to sleep okay. Mm-hmm. Going to sleep okay is very, very important to me because I can't sleep uncomfortable. Like, you may be mad before we go to sleep. I'm up. I got insomnia. I'm up. I'm looking at you like, how are you sleeping? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I move. So I wouldn't do that with friendships. If something weird happens in a friendship, I'm like, all right. We know, can talk about it later. Yeah, we, we can. We can hold on to that. You know, mm-hmm. you're having a moment. Mm-hmm. You know, it's fine. But mm-hmm. with that husband and wife, I'm like, no, hey, 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 let's sit at this table. And mm-hmm. nobody's yelling. Nobody's screaming. I'm not a screamer. I don't I don't raise my voice. I don't use anything derogatory. And I'm, I don't believe in uh, when people say, oh, I just said it because I was upset. Nothing's going to come out of my mouth that I don't mean. So I'm not going to say nothing disrespectful to you or to, uh, you know, just kind of call you out a name or anything like that. I'm just mm-hmm. like, hey, I'm upset about this. Let's talk about this. Did you have to grow to that point of like you doing the tough talks or not even just a tough talk, but like when you are trying to figure out an issue with somebody that you're romantic with and not yeah. meet it with so much anger or attitude or like the childness that sometimes comes with you needed to talk to somebody about something? I've, I think I've quietly all always kind of been like that but my maturity level grew with it Mm -hmm. but it definitely upped its game uh this is my second marriage so i went through a divorce Mm -hmm. and uh she was not a communicator at all like like if we got mad she was just mad and that's how the house stayed it was no hey i'm sorry hey my bad that's when that d is like we could be mad for three three days or three months it Mm -hmm. could happen right so after leaving her i went through very very uh i went to a very very good counselor went to therapy black man get some counseling something wrong with y'all sometimes Mm-hmm. <laughs> but some of the stuff he dropped in me was about around communication and, and centered around how to talk and how to be. So when I chose to choose another mate, I had to make sure it was somebody where we were equally yoked in communication. I think people get equally yoked mixed up. It's like, how much money you make? What kind of job do you have? What's your career choice? Oh, what that's kind of all do you people have? care about now. That's all they care about. Nah, man, you need to figure how out somebody that you can life? have a successful argument with. Somebody you can talk to, something that got both of y'all steaming, but you can still talk regular. So I think that's where it started. And I was like, the next mm-hmm. person I talk to, I need to talk to somebody that knows how to, one, apologize, uh, two, uh, sit and listen for understanding and not just to respond. Because I'm going to give you the same respect. And uh, three, man, listen, talk for solutions, not for emotion. You need mm-hmm. some logic, bro. Like some people just, I'm mad, so I'm going to show you how mad I am and this is how I'm going to stay. And uh, so I started searching for those things. And I think when I got married the second time, I think that's what made me kind of stay like that. Like, I want to mm-hmm. keep us right here. Mm-hmm. No matter if we're having a riffraff, we're in that 20% of our relationship, you know, the 80-20 situation. Mm-hmm. Let's be able to sit down and talk and get to it. How long have you been married? Uh, it'd be two years in April. Okay. How long were you married in the last marriage? Uh, three years. Three years. Three years. Uh, Should have been gone in one. Ooh. <laughs> My yeah. baby said it was time. Should have been gone. Like, I just mm-hmm. knew it in that first year. I'm like, ooh, what did I do? You know, like. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's one of my worst fears. It's, it's, a, like... it's a fear. But, but I do learn from mistakes. Uh, I don't put it all on her. Mm-hmm. I feel like everybody, before you get married, you need to live together first. I didn't live with her first. And I think the things that went wrong with us mostly, if we had to live together first, I would have seen them. So that I take accountability in. There's mm-hmm. just some things we just didn't mesh with once we merged. Mm-hmm. So then after that, I was like, hey, you know, I'm not dating nobody else. I'm not marrying nobody else unless we live together first. And um, this ain't no knock at girls with children, but I don't have any. So I preferably wanted to date somebody that didn't have any because my first wife had a, a, a child. So I was like, I'm not doing that again. That's and an not because they're bad people. The Man, there's some baby moms that are the most beautiful women in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. But what I think women don't take into play, uh, when you break up with somebody that has a kid, you're doing two breakups. You're breaking up with them and the children. So that's two heartbreaks that you have to, you know, recover from where they're just recovering from you. Mm-hmm. So I didn't want to go through that again. So that was my thing. Oh, yeah. Was yeah. that too much? I'm sorry. I just No, it. Okay. that's perfect. I love a talker that comes on and talks. Yeah, I'll be ready so to get yeah. Let's go. Yeah, you got some thoughts, Cheryl. Um, okay, last one. I'm curious to know, when is the last time you cried? When is the last time I cried? Uh, uh, November. Okay. Care to tell us why? Uh, uh, we lost we lost a baby. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, sorry to hear that. that. Yeah, yeah. So that uh, that got me. I'm praying for you all in one. my prayers. Cause mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So that's that sucked a lot. Mm-hmm. That still stings. That almost got me just now. So yeah. Uh, Are y'all gonna keep trying? 
Yes, we okay. are going to keep trying, but uh, it's it sucks because uh, that was number two, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they both were in the same month. Man, so November bad. twenty-two, uh, November twenty-two, and November twenty-three. Mm. So it's like, goddamn, November, damn, you know. And then mm -hmm. it's like it's, which I'm glad I'm a comedian because I, I told a joke that made both of us laugh in the moment. I'm like, damn, it's the same fucking Christmas album from last year. It's the same one, same or the same playlist. Get some temptations on in this bitch. Like, damn. <laughs> Did she laugh or was she, she like? She bust out laughing. She, uh, I mean, it was, it was the same album in the same order. I'm like, they just got this shit on repeat every year. Mm -hmm. I'm like, we got to find a way. Shuffle. <laughs> like, shuffle something. Like, we got to find a way to avoid. It's called November. shuffle this year. Yeah. Shuffle, shuffle. Yes. Yeah. And on that note, we're going to move on to weird sex. And when we come back, we're oh. gonna get to know Rod Minger a little bit more. Let's do it. You said a man is not. A necessity, a man is a luxury, like dessert. <laughs> yeah. A man is absolutely not a necessity. Did you mean that to sound mean and bitter? Oh, not at all. I adore dessert. I love men. I think men are the coolest. But you don't really need them to live. Okay, you guys, this week's Weird Sex, this is another freak accident. I want to know how people are winding up in the hospital in crazy situations. Uh, no crimes this week. But I didn't know this. Um, many years ago, I guess it's like six years ago, there was a condom like snorting challenge going on on the internet. I don't know if it's Instagram or the Tiki Talk or what the children were doing, but they were taking condoms and they were putting them in their nose and trying to like get it through their nose and pull it out through their Children mouth. Children or adults? I don't know. I'm okay. saying kids because who the fuck is doing this as grown, grown like us? You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you, you either child of the mind or child for real. Anyway, um, so I fell into a deep hole and I'm like, where, where are condoms going besides on the penis? Why are they entering your body any other way but the pussy or the booty hole? Mm. Or your mouth, you know? Um, I never suck dick with the condom. Me neither. Either. That's childish. But. <laughs> but, or, you know, safe, depending on what you're doing it and why you're doing that. Uh, but there was a girl in Cameroon. Uh, she sucked the condom off of somebody's dick. I don't know if rent was due or what was going on, but she was sucking so damn hard. She swallowed the condom, but she she didn't just swallow it like she was going to eat. She swallowed it like she was breathing. It went down somewhere wrong. And she um, ended up in the hospital. And when they looked inside of her, they saw the condom. It was like, this is the problem. And then there were lots of other accidents. People had inhaled the condom. It was in their lungs. Somebody thought they had tuberculosis. I didn't even realize that was a thing still. I thought you got a shot for that and you don't get the shit until my homegirl said that she took a test and she thought she had tuberculosis so, so we didn't let her come to an event or something like that. Anyway, because <laughs> uh, we was like, bitch, is that contagious? Are you getting your shots? You get your shots. Like, what's going on? Are you an anti-vaxxer? What's up? We get shots around this bitch. Anyway, um, people were, people got pneumonia. People thought that they had other conditions and when they're looking in their bodies, they're seeing that there are condoms down there. Um, some of these girls are working girls, if you know what I mean. And some people, I don't know what the fuck y'all was doing, but why are you sucking so hard that you ate a condom? I would be or you so it in? And what's going on with any of your insides? Like how did it get through there? And then I wonder how small was the damn condom? Or how big is your throat? What's going on? Are you, are you in the circus like the man the other week? I don't know. It's just, it was odd. Um, so I thought it was interesting. So if you, if this resurges because um, nothing new is under the sun and I know y'all like to do the crazy things on the internet and we do have young listeners, don't be sucking condoms up your nose do and on your throat. Put it on the pee pee and Jump. just sit on it. Do a swirl, do a bounce. You can suck it. Don't do and, all these weird things with it. But don't try to ingest it into don't, any Imagine anywhere. that's the way you check out of this world. And everyone's like, how did Natasha die? How did Natasha die? And your parents don't want it to get out. It gets out. And now you're a whole so, joke. You on the damn news. You're on CNN because people thought you had a rare case of tuberculosis combined with the latest version of COVID-22. And really, you had two condoms. You snorted a condom. in your lungs because you were trying to get TikTok famous and dancing around to whatever song and sucking up condoms. That's wildly insane. Mm -hmm. Y'all be careful out here. Anyway, thanks for sending in that story. And if you see any more crazy happenings like that, or if you did some crazy shit, you got a little toy stuck in your pussy, in your booty hole, um, in your ear, in your nose, wherever, it doesn't matter. Send it to me. DM it to me on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Kiki said mm -hmm. so. 
Don't let spring cleaning fool you. There's always a little extra room for today's sponsor, Via Hemp. Add a little something extra to your bedroom, something sexy, something that's going to be fun and make you feel good. Today's sponsor, Via Hemp, has a great product that we have been ranting and raving about for so long, and that's the High Love Gummy. It's a unique blend of cannabinoids, aphrodisiac herbs, and it's all packed into a gummy that tastes really good and is going to make you feel even better. I absolutely love the High Love Gummies. I keep them right on my nightstand. Mm. I don't be playing around about them. I just I keep it right there so I don't want to be rummaging around in the drawer, you know? Mm -hmm. They are so good. If you are waiting to try them, you've got to stop waiting. They're so great. And not only are the High Love gummies great, but we also, well, Via Hemp also has other gummies. They have gummies that have THC and some that are THC free. And the best part about it is they ship to all 50 states legally, no medical card required. So if you're 21 or over, you can use the code and the link in our description to get a little discount and a free sample. So y'all already know I love the high love gummies, but... I like that they have so many different options and so many different flavors. I mean, they taste like fruit snacks. Mm -hmm. You could really snack on them if you, if, if. Well, if, be careful. Yeah, be, be <laughs> careful. The instructions are on the back. I love yeah. the high love because it does what the high love is supposed to do. It's so funny because me and my man went to go see One Love, um, the Bob Marley movie, and we set up the, the table really cute in the movie theater. So we went to, um, What's the one in uh, Colony Square? I pick. Oh, so they have the really mm -hmm. cute tables. You sit in a little booth. And I sat my high love gummies out. We got our little drinks. We popped one right before the movie start started. And it just set the tone for our date. But I also love the zen. I mm -hmm. have been doing a lot of meditating lately, y'all, trying to get my mental right and being happy. Sometimes mm -hmm. you need a little extra help with that. So when I pop my zen, it makes me go into literally preparation for a manifestation. It, I, it, I just love how they've crafted what they've crafted in these products to make you feel how you're supposed to feel in the moment that you're trying to feel that. So if you want to feel a little nasty, take your high love. You're trying to meditate, you want to get a little self-love going, take your zen. If you want to sleep a little bit better, have a sound sleep, take the dreams. I live by these gummies, you guys. And I didn't used to be like a gummy person. They mm -hmm. have, they have um, turned me around and saved my <laughs> life. I've given my life to buy a hip. Oh my goodness. I love them too. They have so many products. Remember, they have stuff with THC and without THC. So it's totally up to you what you would like to indulge in. Let the gummies work their magic. If you're 21 or over, check out the link to Via in our description and use the code COCKTAILS to get 15% off. Plus, you get a free sample every time. Take your passion and pleasure to a whole new level with High Love from Via Hemp. Okay, Rod. So... <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about, you know. His mouth is hanging <laughs> open. <laughs> like, what? I don't know the if I can address fuck? that because of the commercial break. Or... Oh, no, you can address it. You can say it. You had a comment about the weird sex? No, because I just realized when it went down, you know why it probably was probably, it probably blew up while oh, I was in there because it probably, mm -hmm. pff, you know, like you blow lights. So I just realized. Oh, yeah. It probably stopped something from going away. You thought to go. you had the bubble gut. Yeah, she but had, no, they seemed to me because it was, fully, it was fully used. Like, it was crazy. Mm. It rolled up and it rolled out. Mm. That's so disgusting. But anyway, and a uh, head with a condom is terrible. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no point. Just don't no do point. it. It's just like, just don't do it. If you don't want to do it, just don't do it. Just, yeah. Well, pass. some of these girls were working, and so they just got this man up off the street. I get it. Oh, that's fair. But, well, you see. Yeah, but it's just like. It's but like, they wow. already doing it, so right. just wrap but it up. It's, it's so, just, you know. It's just, it's just net. I don't know. For me, uh, the girl that did it, it was like, you know, she wanted to do it with the condom on and then wanted to come up and be in my face. I'm like, I know what's on but the condom. But it smelled like rubber. It smelled like, your breath smells like rubber, ma'am. I smell it. Okay. I smelled, the, I smelled it on the way up. Okay. So let's just. Let's just skip that part. Let's just pass that part. Let's get back to just doing it, you know, because it's the condom still on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This was a long time ago, way before I was married. Way, mm -hmm. way yeah, before. Yeah, in case Bay listens. <laughs> um, so. Let's this wait. First of all, does your wife come to your shows? Yes, all the time. Has that ever been an issue? No. Okay. Never been an issue. Oh, you mean like like with somebody doing the most in the crowd or something like that? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I want to know like how the they content, do. like whatever oh. you're talking about. Oh no, she loves it. She's my wife's a New Yorker though, so like you know, oh, not, she's, she's not, not she's not easily nothing. offended. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the She'll only time is uh, you know, sometimes girls do the most when they're doing the pictures after the show. It's mm -hmm. Like, oh, I don't like this one. Then they try to do the hand on the chest. Mm -hmm. and just, like, how look, flirty uh, do uh, they get? Huh? How flirty do the women get? Oh, they go there. They go there. Like you know, you know, I'm not, I ain't being conceited, but I'm a little rock solid up under here. So you know, they come. That's why they like they come in for the pictures. Oh, hold on. It's solid. solid. Okay. You know, so they kind of they try to kind of try to grab the peck, you know, somebody that uh, you know, trying to rub, you know, oh, ride your arms hard. What do you say? <laughs> I'm like, thank Get you. Get off but, my titty. What is, you know what I'm saying? 
Like, yeah, I move for like because you want them to come back. You know, come, yeah. come back here, pull your hand. You kind of do it the most. Or the ones that try to put their leg up, or they 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 put their arm on your ch on your shoulder, then put the ass towards the camera. I'm like, man, I don't know who this picture is. That is for. crazy. I've never done turn, that. Turn, turn it this way, please. There we go. Let's do it. Let's do it this way. Mm -hmm. And then I'm I'm very uh, conscious uh, just from working at Disney uh, where my hands are at all the time. My hands are always. If you look at pictures of me and females, my hands are always up. Or it's always visible. It's mm -hmm. never like unseen because I don't want nobody to be like, you know, you just grabbed my ass in the picture. Mm -hmm. No, I wasn't. No, the fuck right I wasn't. Okay, Check the evidence. Shoulder. Yeah, yeah. Or I put them in the I'll do the, you know, the prayer hands in the front, you know, the, the thinking. I love the mm -hmm. thinking in the picture. You, you know what I'm saying? That's my thing. So, yeah. Uh, That's no, a good safe no, pose. No real issues. The, the weirdest issue we ever had was she'll laugh once you hear this. Uh, I had this show uh, somewhere in North Georgia. And this girl I was in a movie with came. I didn't even know her. She was like an extra in the scene. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even know her, but I had put it in a group chat for, you know, y'all come to the show or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. So the girl came and she wore like a, you know, just banging little body, you know, whatever. And had titties out in the middle, you know, the little circle out, the titties right there showing in the meat in the front. You know, yeah. That's what she chose to wear to the comedy show. That's mm -hmm. a good cleavage piece if you got titties. Yeah, the circle out. Yeah, they was mm -hmm. out. They was out. And they sat, she bought front row seats and she brought like three girls, you know. And then, you know, when we took the picture, the girl like, oh, this him? Okay. But my wife is like from here to there. You know, mm -hmm. she, she hears. But she knows mm -hmm. she's like, okay, they think he handsome. It's cool. And then mm -hmm. so the girl takes pictures and she hates the picture every time. She comes back for like four or five times. And then like, let's do one by myself. Let's do one with the girls. Y'all come in. And then she does another one. She does the shoulder with the ass that way. I uh -huh. kind of politely turn her around. And then she's like, so when you was talking about being married in, the, in your show, like, were you serious? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my wife right there. And she walks up to my wife. She's like, oh, I ain't know Rob was married. <gasps> Why would you put me in that predicament? You have a... Oh, because now your wife is like, so you don't be saying like, right. that you married? Yeah. And I don't even know her because I don't know her enough to you talk to her. You didn't know I was married because I said it every I said, show. I said it my show and my ring was on the whole show. I've been talking about it. She's right there. And so, yeah, that was a, that was a, that was a rough ride home. That was a, that's like. Mm, so Y'all had to have a tough talk. We had to have a tough talk, you know, you know, with no screaming, but it was, it was tough. Tough talk. Like, so like, what you mean? Like, what she mean? Like, that's your wife. Because I know she wanted to go off, you know, mm. like, and it's like how she heard it. Because the girl didn't even say it like. She said it so like, oh, I didn't know you had a wife. Like, like we had a whole like. And she been up there all day. Like we so been, it's like y'all knew each other. Uh, like we knew mm -hmm. each other like she that. She set the scene up. And I didn't know her at all. It was, I hate it, when people do that. It was rough. It was it was it was like yeah, you didn't have to do that. It was that was crazy. People are really crazy. People are weird. But other than people, that, she loves my content. She loves what I talk about. She's she's always recording. She'll mm -hmm. set the tripod up. But my wife is working at my show. She sells the merch. I do a raffle giveaway. I give away a free vacation to all mm -hmm. my shows. So she's she, she, she's she's a real trooper. That's a, a good vacation. Woman. Yeah, yeah. I got I got, oh, a, little, got a little situation. Yeah, I can Where do these vacations go? Oh, I'm gonna let you know about it. We'll, we'll talk oh, about it. We can talk about okay. the show. We'll figure it out. We'll figure okay. It out. So let's talk a little bit about just a little bit about divorce. Okay. Uh, we get a lot of listeners who are going through divorce, don't mm -hmm. know if it's time to get a divorce. Hell, right. some friends don't know when it's time to get a divorce and right. family members. When did you know that it was time to get a divorce? I don't know if you're religious or not, but a lot of people are like, damn, we did these vows. We did it under God. Like, you're yeah. supposed to, you're supposed so, to work so, it out. Yeah. When did you know when you were like, hell no, this cannot? Um, I had a mental clock. Once once the bomb went off, that should have stopped us right right then. I was like, all right. I, I was kind of on the churchy side. Like, all right, let's go talk to a counselor. Let's see, can we talk to somebody? Let's see, can we get some help? A religious counselor or a real counselor? Uh, either. We need to talk to somebody because okay. it was like, like I said, uh, my first wife wasn't a communicator. So once we were mad, now it was her and the wrong for why we split. But then it's like, I think she dated maybe more hood dudes before me that probably would want to fight mm. and do this, that, and the third. Was she a little hood? She was, she was a little hood. Okay. I didn't meet her hood. So that's, that's the short version. She was hood where she was from, ran from there, moved here, got into the church. I met her oh, after so the church. She was reformed. So I met her reformed. Mm -hmm. And then once we got married, uh, she, she could keep the mask. Out. She took the she took the, took the mask off, and she was where she was from. She was hood again. And then, That's why we tell y'all to go through that healing process yes. because she brought the things. It sounds Correct. like she brought the things from her old relationships mm -hmm. into this new relationships, and you not them. Mm -hmm. I wasn't them. So then I think when it happened, and I think she wanted to see what my response was. My response is like I said, I want to do the tough talk. Let's sit down. Let's talk. Let's see. Let's get through it. Boom, boom, boom. And I think instead of and this is this is something for women too. Instead of her process, like damn, he's really trying to communicate effectively she was like oh this nigga weak he don't want to fight he don't want to scream mm -hmm. so then she 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 ran it up so then she just stayed angry as if i had done something to her so that's just how we stayed for the next few months mm -hmm. but without her knowing i was like uh the fence happened around july i was like yo bro we got till the new year i'm out you know what i'm saying so i was already kind of counting but we were like for months not even speaking mm -hmm. not talking i was like hey i got a counselor we can talk to i don't want to talk to no counselor i said okay i said well we got to talk about what happened i don't want to talk about it. just get over it let's just move on boom 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 I was like, that's not how that works. You know, we got to talk about it and try to find some solutions and make sure it don't happen again. She's like, mm -hmm. well, we, we ain't been talking, so I'm, I'm sure you done did something to me too. So let's just get over it. You did something, I did something. Let's move forward. Like she was that hood. Were you heartbroken? Ooh. Heartbroken. Uh, I lost 60 pounds. 
Wow. Damn. Yes, I was. Uh, I was. I was. I was uh, swole back then. I was trying to. Uh, in my early years, this was like me at 29, 30. So mm -hmm. I was trying to wrestle. I had an opportunity to go try to audition to wrestle on NXT. That's a minor league wrestling love situation. Mm -hmm. And so I was on the creatine and pumping up and pumping the iron. And uh, I mean, this happened and phew, the weight fell off in like two months. I went from a swole dude to a skinny dude. Had a lot of my friends. They're like, he losing weight. I'm like, yeah, I cut my cardio up. I mm -hmm. cut out meat. You know, I'm lying. You know, mm -hmm. I'm depressed. He's sad I'm depressed to as hell. Casey oh, man. and JoJo on repeat. Oh, bro. Now, let me ask you this. Because a lot of the times men don't really showcase when they're heartbroken and they don't talk about the processes, right. the journey that you guys go through to get up here. Women, we have to talk about it. We might not talk about it on a podcast, but Everybody we will talk does. about it with each other. Mm -hmm. What are the, when you, how do you get over heartbreak as a man? How did you get over that or uh, through it? Well, like I said earlier, I uh, thank God for this guy. He passed away during COVID, but I found this counselor by the name of, uh, his name was Pastor Billups. He was a pastor out of Montgomery, Alabama, where I'm from. Shout out to Montgomery. Uh, my mom actually told him my story, and he just reached out to me randomly. Hmm. Mama's then, gonna step in the business. She stepped in. She Not my baby. Not yeah. my baby. And then he called me, and we just had a conversation for like an hour. He said, man, I wanna, I'm gonna, he said, I'm gonna reach out to you. Man, God put on my spirit to just kind of talk to you. And I mean, I tell you, for the next seven months, he would call me, whether it was 15 minutes a day, hour a day, he was calling me five days a week. And we would just go through sessions like, where you at? What steps you on? How you feeling? This is like before I left, because I didn't leave till December of 2013. Mm -hmm. And he, I was in counseling with him till May of 2014. And then one day, like in May of 2014, I was like, he had exercises. I had homework. It was challenges. You know, I would tell him like, because you know how I was. Once I left, she, she loved me to death. Once I bet I she, was she was missing you. Oh, yeah. And I'm, I'm sure she sees me everywhere now. I'm out of, I'm out of control. But, uh, you know. Playing I, Mary J. Blige, I, sliding oh. down the wall. <laughs> That's and I want this doing. to be a message to some of the women out there that you know you're the problem, and you know you're the problem if you don't know how to get through conflict, and you you either yes. either you either need to like express that and be like I'm having trouble with this, and I need to get help. Sometimes mm -hmm. it really is you, bro. You are gonna mm -hmm. lose a good man, Savannah, Bruh. and to the men who are afraid, <laughs> because a lot of men have said what you said about what she was saying to you or yeah. what she was used to. Yeah. Don't be afraid to get some help. It's okay, you need help. and mm -hmm. nothing is gonna this, be overnight. I like to say this to all men. I I've, I put several messages i talk about anytime on the podcast they talk about marriage i like going to a counselor was the best thing that ever happened to me that's why i talk the way that i talk that's why i have the cadence that i have when i talk about relationships that's why i'm such an empath when i'm listening to other people i have older friends that hit me now like yo man holler at me about this i've saved a couple of marriages not and not braggadociously just like that's holler good. at me because i'm very talk transparent very neutral you know what i'm saying but but it's because of him i always give him like the respect i'm like god put that counselor in my life dude didn't charge me when i'm giving i didn't even oh, really? i didn't even meet him Wow. I didn't even meet him in person. Everything was over the phone. An I didn't angel. meet him until we were done counseling. So I was like, it's the best thing that could have happened because when I was trying to just vent to my friends, you know, my best homegirl or one of my best homeboys or whatever, your friends can hear you, but they don't understand what you're experiencing, especially if y'all the same age. Mm -hmm. You know, who, who, who my age at that time, I'm 30 years old, who's been through a divorce and depressed and now you're quitting your, you know, I stopped the entertainment, went back corporate. Like, I'm a whole nother person. Like, y'all can hear me. But really, I'm bleeding on you. Mm -hmm. And I had to learn that, too. I was bleeding on people. Like, dang, dog, you just, you realize you call Medina and you're bleeding on her. Then you call your other homegirl, you're bleeding on her. Then you call your homeboy. You realize you're, you're cycling the same scenario to different friends. So you're bleeding constantly, which is funny. I didn't even realize how much I was bleeding until a stranger told me. This is after I'm, I'm, I've I'm gone through divorce. I'm back dating again. I go, on, I'm, I go to Birmingham. I have a show down there. And I meet this girl at this bar. And we're, we're hitting it off and we're hanging and we're kicking it and having a good time. And she invites me back to the house. And I was like, yeah, let's come to the crib. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, that baby wasn't ready. You got oh, in there. It was man, like we got in there and she stopped pouring the shots. And, you know, she fired up a blunt. I wasn't a smoker at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but I got secondhand. I got a little high. And <laughs> I, I blink and I wake up. It's the next morning. Right. Mm. I go up front and uh, she's, in, she's sitting in the robe and she's on a computer. But she tight. She's real tight. And she was like, hey, do you, feel, you still feeling hungover? I'm like, yeah, I am. She's like, yeah, go sleep it off. You know, we'll, uh, we'll talk when you get up. I'm like, oh, that's that's really nice of you. Thank you. Oh, you did some shit because like, she oh, going to let you, you I'm know. Like, yeah, I'm like, that's that's really awesome. She need to say something. Yeah, I'm like, that's, mm -hmm. that's really nice You're of you. You're not thank getting you. up out of here without something. Man, I'm talking about when I, you, I went right back to sleep, woke up like two hours later, and then I was like, I got up. I was like, yo, man. She's like, how you feeling? I said, man, I feel so much better. Thank you for letting me get, grab a nap. She was like, cool. She's like, so do you know what you went to sleep on last night? I was like, oh, my bad. I got a little drunk. I'm probably like, what's up? She gets up, she takes the robe off. This girl has the sexiest lingerie. Like, oh my gosh. She is like, oh, I'm like, oh, bet we can get in now. Bam, punch me in my nope. chest. Back up. This is what you went to sleep on. So like, let me tell you what I know about you. I know about your divorce. 
I know what happened. I know what you went through. I know about your counselor. I know what friends you told. I know how you feel. I know where you moved to. She's like, bro, you was talking. She's, like, she's, like, she's like, that counselor you talking to, like, you need to keep talking to him. Like, she fried my ass. I know she was pissed. Oh, she was, she I was, was ready to get some bro, dick. Bro, she was like, yeah, so you can go. Mm-hmm. And, bro, I was in Birmingham. I had to drive back to Atlanta. Ooh. Still you had over. a lot to think about Still on over. that road I had, trip. I had a two-hour drive to come drive back, hung over. And this girl in this lingerie just like kicked me the hell out. And then I learned then. I was like, okay. So then I took that to my counselor. I was like, yo, man, this girl, I, I gave him the whole story. He's like, okay. He said, so these are the things you got to do. He said, you got to eliminate how many people you're talking to about going through divorce. How many people you talk to about your hurt. So then I mm-hmm. sent a text to anybody that had told how my divorce was feeling. I said, hey, guys, from now on, I'm not talking to y'all about the divorce anymore. Mm. I want to talk about things that's moving forward. You know, how my job is going. How's my new condo? You know, how's the traveling going? Am I going to get back into entertainment? I was like, start asking me how my dates are going. I said, I want to talk about moving forward. I don't want to backtrack and talk about her. I'm going to let her leave leave her in the past and move forward. And mm. anybody call me like, yo, how's it going? I'm like, hey, I don't want to talk about it. But how are mm-hmm. you doing? And I would flip it. And that just changed everything. And then, you know, she was trying to get me back for like a year and a half. So then I had set it up on where her text message didn't even come to my phone. So whatever she was taking, it would just show her name and would say message, and then I would delete it. Mm-hmm. So I just like it's like nobody. that is those are the signs. This is what we were kind of talking about last week. Where we were telling the girl like sometimes if you keep talking about something mm-hmm. so much, you attract you're it. not really getting over. It. You can't Correct. get through it because now you just keep reliving it and going Bruh. through it again. And this is a great example of someone who you really decided something yep. and you were yep. sticking to it. And when to. you decide certain things. Everything around you has to change. Bro, mm-hmm. everything, your circle, your people. I didn't let them ask me questions. So I'd be like, man, yo, how, oh, when old girl call you? I said, man, bro, don't ask my old girl no more. It's That's like, when you really know people I've are done. I've had those situations plenty of times. And it's like, yeah, that is when you're done. And it's like, you go through something, and it's like you realize I am having word vomit with everybody yes. I talk to. Mm-hmm. I'm telling everybody the same sad story. You're upset because you're stuck Bruh. in it. You're not making changes. Shut the fuck up and make some changes mm-hmm. instead of keep telling the same story. Yep. It's like, it's almost like you're trying to throw a pity party for yourself because you want some comfort because mm-hmm. misery yes. likes com- company. It. But it, if you really want to move forward, you're not going to stay in that. You got to shut gotta up move past it. Yep. and figure out ways to move forward. Fair. And this is also mm-hmm. for the girls who, Uh-oh. the young lady a few weeks ago who sent the message about wanting to end it with the dude who he ain't shit. His, his daughter moved in the house. She was like, but we got this lease. Break the lease. Really be done. Be out. This is a really, you was really done. Out. I don't want to talk to you no more. We ain't nothing to discuss. The divorce is final. Let's move on. Mm-hmm. So then fast forward, you move on. How much time in between before you really could start healthy dating and oh, okay. you you meet? Sometimes people don't know what that looks like. Oh, well, I started dating pretty much immediately, but you, I like the word you chose. It wasn't healthy dating because I was very, uh, now I was an honest bachelor. I was like, hey, listen, I just went through divorce. I'm not in the space to be in a serious relationship. So if that's what you're looking for, I'm the wrong person. What's but, your zodiac sign? I'm a Leo. I was about to say, are you a Leo? Yeah. That's crazy. I'm very open. I was very open about it. But, you know, uh, at 30, you know, that becomes a challenge. Oh, I changed his mind. Let me tell you something. Ain't no, ain't no booty in the world I don't think can make no you change your mind. We that. don't feel like it. You don't feel like it. That's just. Well, and especially a Leo. Especially a Leo. I was very stern. I was very honest. Uh, so maybe a year and a half of that. And then I was like, fine. I was like, okay. Uh, my conscience started kicking in. I got tired of seeing that look on their face when they were like, I mean, but what we doing? You know, <laughs> you know, so that started getting to me like, damn, like I'm that guy. I'm never the guy that can just run through and, and get out. It's like, you know, but but you're different. You know, it's like mm-hmm. it was always like damn, you're too nice. But I'm mm-hmm. nice. Like I met two girls that were going through divorce. I'm like, oh, this is perfect. You know, they don't <laughs> want nothing. Then they're like, nah, you can move me and, me and my kids can move in with you. No, Ooh. your kids. That's the first thing. No, wait a minute. No. <laughs> yeah. Like one girl brought me lunch to my job with two of her sons in the car. I'm like, oh, my God. We had only had we had a one night stand. I had a Valentine's Day where a guy I was dating had his son bring me my gift to my job. Not what? Cute. Not, yeah. not cute. I kept dating him though. He was six eight. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, <now> this, <laughs> we all know who that was. <laughs> now this, 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 this girl was thick as hell. Now, now she was a little thick, son. But I was just like, yo, you yeah. Shouldn't, you shouldn't, <laughs> what did she just, bring for lunch? Uh, she had she had cooked something. She had like she, a little homemade meal. I knew it was homemade. It was homemade, too. and she came with a little tight skirt on and, and mm-hmm. went to the front desk. She's like, I'm here for Rod Minger. Mm-hmm. And then somebody called me to the front, like, you know, I could tell the secretary, like, uh, Rod, you got to guess. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay. Then I was like, who was it? Then she texted me, like, hey, I'm going to be outside in the car. And I walked out to the car and our two boys was in the car. I was like, oh, wow. Hey, daddy. <laughs> they was like, hey. <laughs> hey, Mr. Rod, how you doing? I'm like, how y'all doing? And I was like, that was weird. 
And then that that weekend, that's weird. Yeah, that weekend she tried to invite me to Six Flags. And I, and I, oh I, yeah, that's definitely a family I, friendly I day. I declined. I was like, she's it's like, what you got up. a problem with me having kids? I'm yes. like, yes, and it's okay. Yes, yes, you, should, you should want me to meet your kids yet. It's too early. You know, I just met you last week. I don't want to meet your boys yet. So it was weird. Mm -hmm. So that was that. So that was strange. Mm. More than half of women will develop a UTI, mm. and it's usually from improper wiping. Every time you wipe with toilet paper, you're smearing poop mm. with bacteria around, mm. Uh, mm. increasing your risk of getting a UTI. Even if you were to use like wet wipes, you're just introducing nasty chemicals to your body that mess with your skin's um, microbiome. Switching to Hello Tushy Bidet products, the most delicate skin on your body by using a targeted stream of fresh water, giving you a chemical free way to get clean. You guys, I am so excited that we now are a part of the Tushy community. Because listen, as a world traveler, when you go out of the country, there are bidets in the hotels, in the public restrooms. Like they're just that's a lot a, of places. Yeah, that's a part of their their bathroom life. Like it's you feel very clean when you just feel that water spraying in your booty hole. You just feel real clean. Cause sometimes the wiping really doesn't get all of the You are just smearing it. And just, it's like, or you thought you got all the paper out and and you find out later, maybe when you were doing something else, that you still had a little piece of tissue back there. Yeah. Tushy mm -hmm. is literally like a mini shower for your butt. Um, you feel very clean. I have just been so happy to sit on it. I'll be using the tushy when I don't even need to use the tushy. It just feels good. It feels good. And <laughs> one of my really friends does. was like, girl... Well, I won't tell you how, what she uses it for, but it does feel good. <laughs> and it feels good to be clean down there, y'all. I'm absolutely enjoying feeling like I'm traveling the world when really I'm just sitting in my bathroom on my toilet with my own tushy. The tushy is great, you guys. No matter where you live, it's easy to install. It's not like you have to go and get a whole new toilet. Mm -hmm. It installs to the toilet you already have and it connects to the water line. So you guys don't need to wait. You need to order your tushy today. Um, leave the bathroom feeling as though you never even went. And that's what I like. Mm -hmm. Join the three million butts who have already made the switch to tushy. For a limited time, our listeners will get 10% off your entire order when you use the code COCKTAILS at checkout. That's 10% off your order at H-E-L-L-O-T-U-S-H-Y dot com with promo code COCKTAILS. Again, leave the bathroom feeling like you didn't even go. Mm -hmm. Join the 3 million butts. It's 3 million people with this out there already. Join the 3 million butts and us who have already made the switch to Tushy. For a limited time, our listeners are getting 10% off the entire order when you use code COCKTAILS, C-O-C-K-T-A-L-E-S, at checkout. That's 10% off your order at H-E-L-L-O-T-U-S-H-Y dot com with the promo code COCKTAILS. So <laughs> you meet your, your current wife. Mm -hmm. When someone is in the, re the process of remarrying, like I can only imagine that there is, all of these thoughts, like, I hope you're not hood and hiding it. <laughs> I hope you, like, what? did you go through a phase where you didn't even want to get married again? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So if I left, my, I left my first wife in 2013, <laughs> I don't even think marriage even crossed my mind to like 2000, maybe 16, 17 ish. Men and mm -hmm. women are so yeah, different because second. we get these stories from women and women be like, and I'm ready to go back out there. Yeah, nah. I just <laughs> I just wanted to, you know, have a little fun, you know, mm -hmm. read how, how you want to. But I just wanted to kick it and have fun. I was uh one of my steps in counseling was uh try to remember who you were before you were married. And I was like, what did I do before I was married? You forget, you know, you get lost in somebody else, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I, like, oh, I used to go to happy hours, I used to go to parties, I used to go to festivals by myself and just kick in and meet strangers. So that's what I started doing again. I started doing all the things I did beforehand and having a blast. But like I said, when that, you know, the empathy kicked in, well, I can be like, what are we doing? Like I started hearing that a lot. You know, <laughs> now I ain't saying no thousands of times, but I heard it enough to be like, damn, like, all right, nigga, like you gotta sit your ass down somewhere. Yeah. I love that you, uh, to hear a man say that that affected you. You it were like, damn, me, yeah. I'm hurting feelings. I was like, damn, yeah, like it was weird. And, uh, you know, because weird stuff happens, man, especially when you like a, a, a successful dater, as I, as I like to call it, people that date properly. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I tell women all the time when I went out on dates with women when I was a bachelor way before my wife um, you know <laughs> to be clear I would tell them like I would tell them like hey like I'm the guy you don't have to lie to uh -huh. if I call you and ask you can we do something Friday and you already have a date tell me you have a date we'll plan something for Saturday I'm not the guy I don't get jealous and insecure like that because I feel like you should have a roster somebody else should want you because I just met you so your phone's not dry so let's just be honest that neither one of our phones are dry 
And then let's let's if if none of them got you locked in, well, you want to fire the whole bench. Let me just get, let me let me jump on the roster and see what I can go and see if we, <laughs> see if we work. See, see what I'm saying? Get I'll tell you, that is Leo line. behavior. When yeah. I was dating my boyfriend, we weren't together yet, and I was very clear, like. Hey, like I'm moving differently. I'm yep. not about to be doing girlfriendy type stuff if we're not together. And, and he it. understood that. Like my phone would be blowing up with like certain people that I was dating, calling yeah. out, and he would just be like, "I get it. I get it. Like we're not together." And I was like, mm -hmm, "We not." That's but it. if you're yeah, trying to lock it down, and lock it down, then yeah, yeah, yeah. I can tell them niggas to go somewhere. What's up? <laughs> yeah, it's like it takes six months for them skeletons to go away. Cause they still be here, yo. Cause I mean, when you say it them, takes time, people mm -hmm. call. That's you, what I be trying to tell the niggas who are not Leos. Mm -hmm. so it takes a little time. Now. <laughs> it takes a little time. These you see the material. You know what's going on, bro. Like, come on, you didn't have a taste. Bruh. You know what's up. Give me some time. You see this light? Do yeah. you see this light? It Hello? attracts. It's premium, come on, baby. Man. It attracts. It's nah, all fair. over the internet. Come on. <laughs> nah, for real though. Like for real. Like I kind of be. I kind of dig it. Like oh, you got so we got niggas trying to kick it. Okay. All right. Now wait, I got another question um, about your current marriage. Okay. Now, when did you meet her? What year was this? Because I'm her, putting timetables together. I in met my her uh, in December of 2017. Uh, we okay. started going. Start hanging out as close friends in January of eighteen, trying to be just we just could be friends. Uh huh. You know, friends kind of start crossing some lines, but you know, we still were both like, hey, you know, I date people. She like, I date people. Okay, cool. It's it's, it's fair until you know you start hanging too much, then that that jealousy kicks in. What mm -hmm. you mean, a nigga calling you? What you mean, like that? When that kicked down, like hold up, mm -hmm. something's happening. So what I learned is, uh, black people we can't do gray. We think we can, but it's either black. Or you white. can't do gray when you care. When you when really you care, care about somebody, then it is no, like there's no gray. So it's everything like, else I, is gray. Yeah, <laughs> when yeah. you don't care. Mm -hmm. Right. So like, yeah, I had like you know some people that was hitting me up, and I would be honest. You know, first it used to be funny, like, oh, this girl hit me, uh, ha ha. And it's like, oh yeah, my, my ex hit me up. Boom, boom, boom. Like, then one day it was like, what you mean? What, what I mean? What he said though? And it was like that. You know, what I'm saying mm -hmm. like, something like, what you mean? Let me see. He hit you up. Let me see. And then what was funny? Well, uh, me and her, uh, me and her ex are from the same hometown, which is hilarious. Mm. So he had reached out to some mutual friends of ours. I mean, him didn't know each other, but we knew some mutual people. And uh, ex, he, her ex husband, her ex boyfriend, or just okay, yeah. So then those people hit me up like, hey man, my boy hit me up saying like, you know, like he thank you, flirt with his girl. Woo, woo, woo. I'm like, what? I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, hold his up, girl, what? his girl, hold on. And then so I'm laughing at them, but I'm on the phone like, what, what did nigga talking about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you <laughs> hey, I talking about? Call me I'm from back home. I'm like, hold up, what the hell is going on? What you mean? Why this nigga so upset if you ain't talking to her no more? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Bitch, you need to start explaining some shit. <laughs> Fuck. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. <laughs> matters of the heart. I'm, I'm furious, right? So then, yeah. it, I mean, it got so bad. Like, I mean, I'm talking. He had like two or three niggas hit me up. Like, hey, man, maybe yeah, my boy. You know, because we all from Montgomery. You know, yeah, my boy hit me up. Like, yeah, man. You know, you, you think about proposing and shit? I'm like, for real, that lame ass nigga. I call him. What the fuck? The nigga talking about proposing and shit? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm pissed. Yeah. So then, my best female friend, which I tell niggas this, like, I feel like women need a really close homeboy, and men need a really close home girl. Have need you ever wanted to date your really close girlfriend? No, not ever. She's always been my close friend. I love her to death. Is like, she attractive? She's beautiful. Okay. Yeah, but like, is we, she married? Yes, yeah, she is. Okay, good. And, and I was, she was in my wedding, and I was in hers. Okay. Yeah, Last like, time I had a close friend, I started fucking him. So <laughs> you got to be careful. But you know what it was? Uh, I had a close female friend in high school, uh -huh. and then we messed around, and then we weren't friends anymore, and that hurt. That's the other option. Yeah, so yeah, so that that happened. So after that, mm -hmm. I knew like, if you like that vibe, that vibe is way more valuable than a night of passion. So mm -hmm. I was I was able to lock in and be disciplined for that right there. So it is very possible to do without none of that. It's just like if y'all vibe, it's really great friends. Like keep it right there. Like you'll do way more. I you know agree. What I'm saying? And they last longer. It lasts way longer. We've been friends what 15, 16 years. But she saved my relationship with my wife because I was out. Mm. Oh, this bitch got niggas calling man. Niggas calling me about another nigga man. Fuck all this. You know what I'm saying? I'm out. You know what I'm saying? So what was the truth? Uh, they well, was just not over. The men were just not over her. No, it just niggas just being sappy, man. Like, come on, oh. dog. You don't don't. First thing, as a guy, this was me. Cause I was mad with one of the niggas that called me. Cause I'm like, as a guy, you don't call another guy to call another guy. Wait a minute. One of the actual guys, not his friend. No, no, like the actual guys that no. One of the guys, the friends. Oh, okay. One of the mutual friends. He called me like, yeah, man. You know what's going on, man? I said, man. First thing, oh, you know, explanation. Secondly, right? I just started dating this girl, so I'm not finna out her to a nigga that probably ain't doing shit. And he ain't, if he was doing the right thing, I couldn't step there in no way. Period. Okay, so I'm not finna help give you ammunition from him to come at her when he probably doing the fuck he want to. Because if he was doing what he's supposed to do, I wouldn't be able to step in. I bet you nigga can't step in on me. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of stepped on like that. And I secondly, like that I'm confidence. upset with you as a man because I'm never gonna call another man a hey, dog. Call old boy and see if he mess with my girl. That's lame. Okay. That's it like some that's lame. Lame. Like I'm not doing that. Y'all need it's something so to do. Lame because that's so lame. you're right. Yeah. Like, if nah, he was doing what you were supposed to do, couldn't step nobody in. step in. Thank you. And I'm like, and don't be calling me about no other nigga, dog. Like, come on. Because Mary, at that point, we were very, very new. 
So it was it was it was weird. You know I hate saying? when stuff happens when you're new. Yeah, it was like we so new. It's so new. And you, it's so like, you gotta explain yourself, and then you are still in the situation of like niggas is niggas, and, and you it just, it just it just fucked with my masculinity. Like I'm on the phone, like yo, what's up, dog? I ain't talked to you in a minute. Hey, dog, I need to talk to you. What? About what? And we about to gossip? The bro, fuck going we, on? bro, I need to talk to you. Man, you know this girl named Jazz? I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, man, my boy talking about, you know, that's his girl. And I, I'm like, hey, bro, man, get off my phone. I thought you called me to catch up. I ain't talked to you in like two years. You know what I'm saying? So it was like boy, that. Well, fuck you. But, and if she looks, she get took. So go bro, on about your business. That part. So then what I did from there was uh, my female friend was like, hey, Rod, you, you're a little angry. I ain't shy. I've been watching you since you got the boys. I ain't never seen you angry about no girl. Mm. I ain't nobody angry, man. This help is disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? Like Niggas her. calling me. She's like, but why you angry though? She was so calm. Why are you angry though? Mm -hmm. What you mean? Like, but you taking her side because you're a girl. She's like, nigga, you angry. So I've known you all these years. I ain't never seen you angry about something like that. So what's going on? So I sat back. I was like, damn. Okay, Let so I, the friend shit ain't working. The friend shit ain't working. So I hit her up. I was getting ready to go on another contract. I'm still, uh, I'm on vacation from Disney, but I'm getting ready to go out. I said, hey, look, I just realized I'm tired of the gray area. Let's go black or white. I said, so I'm gonna fly you out to the ship to come visit me. Uh, I was doing a tour of Cabo at the time. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I said, I'm gonna fly you out here, come visit me on the ship. On said, a Disney ship? Yeah, yeah, on a <laughs> Disney ship. You know what I'm talking about? I just spent a little bread real quick. I'm gonna be a little and mermaid said, in this but bitch. Yeah. <laughs> but I said, when you come here, uh, you're gonna come here as my girlfriend. And let's just see how that goes. I said, let's work this summer out as boyfriend and girlfriend, no more gray. I'm with you, you with me. And let's see how that goes. Now, yeah. see, that's how you do it. Yeah. Just, just it. lay down the it. law. This oh, is what it is. Yeah. This is what yeah. it is. Yeah. Just stay wow. where it is. Yeah, that's it. I had to say, like, just do it. I mean, and, and I almost whooped the nigga ass on the ship because he tried it. Man, we had, we had we had a little formal night, and she had you, Wait, know, you see happened? my wife. She had a little she had a little ballerina. She's a ballerina. Bar. Yeah, so Ooh. she got a little figure, and man, she had this little tight pink dress. I still remember the dress. Like, don't even wear that shit no more. It still flashed me back. So we walking down the hallway holding hands, and nigga tried to walk between us. Oh, I almost lost my job. Nigga, what? She's like, right, let's go. Nah, fuck that. He wanted it's up. And that's how I realized. Disney okay, man. That's some love. That's some love in here. Cause I was like about to lose the job. She's like, nigga, let's go. You're gonna get he fired. He was giving Disney villain. Yeah. It, oh, What's yeah, up, I, Scar? Nigga, what? Scar. Scar, <laughs> nigga. Mufasa Jafar. gotta go. Uh -huh. Mufasa gotta go. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now let me ask you this before we move on to indecisive Diane. A lot of the times there will be women that write in, and we see this on Instagram all the mm -hmm. time. People will be like, I've been dating my guy for seven years, Ugh. eight years, ten years, and Boy. like I, I I want us to get married. Mm -hmm. Like, and a lot of men that I've talked to who are on their shit, yeah. very, they're respectful. They're great catches. They're like, it does not take us longer than two years to really know if we want to marry you. We know immediately. You know immediately. A guy knows. Uh, when, when that anger came in with the jealousy, I knew. What was funny, I know it sounds really gay. <laughs> I'm not thinking you're going to say that. Come on, doc. Can, <laughs> what? can I be That's serious? Fine. Can I be you, serious for a what? second? Okay. 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 I'm trying to be serious Let here, okay? Let me sip my water. Is that so, wine? this the funniest thing happened. It's wine. Is it gone? Oh, no. Oh, the bottle. Yeah, it's yeah. under Whitley's thing. So, oh, okay. the funniest <laughs> thing happened. So, it's funny. I seen the picture uh, going through some old pictures today. So, I remember the day I seen my wife for the first time. Mm. I w it was my first. Uh, so, with the short version... When you first get to Disney, when you get on the ship, you don't start working. You have to go to safety for two weeks. What so is that? You, you're taking a class to learn everything. You need to know all the exits, all the escapes, so all, the, all the exit boats. You need to know everything. So you're not working. You're under. You're in a class under you're the ship. You're in school. You're in school. So finally, my first week out, uh, I'm out watching. They have this thing called Sail Away at the beginning of the cruise. Like, which you, you've seen it on Carnival, the big part they have before mm -hmm. they have one on Disney. So I'm out there watching. And this white guy comes out. Hey, ladies and gentlemen at Disney, how you doing? I'm blah, blah, blah. I'm Matt. How you doing? And he's doing these. He's like, are we about to have a party? And he does these little lame ass dances, right? And I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing. So the cruise director says, hey, next week, that's going to be you. I'm like, oh, shit, what you mean? They never told me I had to dance before I got there. So now I'm learning that I got to go dance. So I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, shit, let me get closer. Let me record the script. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can, you know, do the dance as cool as I can. Mm -hmm. So I get my camera out and I'm recording. And as the guy's talking, he's like, I want to introduce you to the Disney dancers. And my wife come jumping out from backstage. And you can see me. I have no, the, she I, came jumping out. Like, like, she, an no, literally, like, a literally, like a little antelope. Literally a deep, like both legs fully extended, leap on literally like a physical, like I'm just talking about literally, like an just angel. jumps out, boom, from the just does a dance and, and just, and I have it on video to this day. I'm following her. I'm like, yo, who the hell is that? Because <laughs> I've been there and I haven't seen any black people. Mm -hmm. So here's the numbers. There's 1,500 crew members. Of the 1,500 crew members, 100 are black. Of the 100 that are black, only 12 are American. I was about to say, how many speak English? Right, thank you. <laughs> so now I'm like, I ain't even seen no black people. Mm. But this girl, I'm just watching. I'm on the camera following her. Like, damn, who is that? I ain't even realized until I looked at the video. I'm like, that motherfucker's fine, right? Mm -hmm. 
So oh, then, shit, I'm about to lose my, my job today. <laughs> right? I got so, then, so then, my, my best female friend D hits me up. <laughs> She's like, What you doing? I said, I don't know. I think I just seen my wife. I'm, mm. I'm being facetious, of course. But I literally you said that. You thought she was being facetious. Right. But I literally said that. And then I was like, I said, I gotta, I gotta go find her. So she goes off stage. I run backstage to go find her. And they have a secret trap, though, that I learned earlier, but they miss it. Imagine these people going through a door. I go behind where the door is, they gone. <laughs> Ain't nobody back there. Like, you know, no, nobody's back there. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Which I find out later they have a trap door. So I don't see her for I don't see her for another two weeks. Dang. I mean it's missing That's a the shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, man, I gotta find her ass dog. So one day I seen outside, I seen on this bench. She was, I think she was arguing with the last nigga. You know, they was on the phone. She was looking, you know, had the eyes round up. And I'm like, man, I've been thinking some cool shit because I don't know when I'm gonna see her again. I'm like, I know what to say. I, I got I got <clears throat> do the eyebrows. I'm like, hey, 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 hang up. She's like, what? I said, hang that shit up. She's like, I'm, I'm going to call you back. I said, I had to go introduce myself. I don't know I'm going to see you again. And that's how we met. Because if I'm <laughs> arguing with a nigga that's pissing me off and somebody tell me I hang up, I'm going to see what the fuck going right. on. That was a good no, one. That get was with a good And you probably trying to make him mad. You're like, hold on, because somebody's trying to talk to me. Right. <laughs> did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. So I did it like that. And mm-hmm. then uh, we kind of, she kind of like, you know, you know, I guess. She was like a popular black girl, so I guess you know she was like, man, you know, it's just another nigga trying to holler. Like, you don't know, I'm finna mm-hmm. change your life. But uh, <laughs> I didn't know I wanted to marry her then. But it's funny how I was drawn to her. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Really early. So your subconscious knew. So, yeah, my subconscious kind of knew, right? But I was like, once we were like loving each other as time went on, I had one thing. I was like, okay, if I can get her to move to Atlanta, because remember I said I won't make that mistake again. Mm-hmm. If I can get her to move to Atlanta, we live together, and we feel the same way we feel on a Disney ship. I'm locked in. I even told her mama. Her mama was like, man, you know, I don't know how I feel about her leaving New York. I said, listen, mom, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I ain't know her mama to go. I brought her on the ship because I had free cruises when I worked there. I brought her mom and her sister on the ship. They came and kicked us. So we already met. But when she's moved to Atlanta, I called her. I said, I know you're probably a little cautious about her moving here, but this is how this is going to go. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tap in with you twice a month. I'm going to let you know how we doing, good or bad. I said, I said, because if she's how she was with me on the ship, if we had the same chemistry, I said, I'll be calling you by the end of the summer to tell you I'm trying to propose. I like, so every month, she moved here in March of 2020 during the pandemic. I call in March. She's great. She's good. She's chilling. I call in April. Like, Mama yeah, we good. Boom, 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 boom. I'm calling her. And then in August, I call her. I say, hey, man, I want your blessing to marry your daughter. You know what I'm saying? We had a two-hour conversation. She cried a little bit. I cried a little bit. I call her, tell her daddy. Like, man, I heard you're doing good things. It's all good. Nigga, just do the right shit. So I'm like, all right, bet. <laughs> and then that was it. And I, and, I propo- and I proposed that, uh, I proposed that January. And you know what? That's beautiful. Again, I'm telling the ladies because the ladies be ignoring the signs. This is why I specifically always say pay attention to how somebody treats you, Mm -hmm. how they plan dates, how they approach you, how they handle you. How interested they are in the rest of your life. Not just when you're fucking in your favorite position. How interested they are in your family. He reached out to her mom to let her mom know, listen, she's in good hands with me. Y'all got to pay attention if you want healthy relationships. If you want a man that really cares about your heart and your your soul, baby girl. Like the girl girl. who was like, "Um, I want to know what I'm doing wrong because I want somebody who's interested to me not just fucking me and it's like you just continue to date and, and you pay can meet attention. somebody who's actually in, who will show you that they're interested in something else because nothing he said had anything to do with the sex or money nothing but the sex was good I mean I feel like that went without <laughs> saying <laughs> because that baby packed her so she said mama I'm going to Atlanta the sex, sex was great I'm going down the sex, south sex was good yeah, it, was, it was good all got, right, y'all. Got to test um, that car. Go ahead. We are going to move on to Indecisive Diane. When we come back, we have some advice letters to read. Rod is going to help us help oh, you all. I like this. And hopefully we help you all. Hmm. Would you stop thinking about what everyone wants? Stop thinking about what I want, what he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's- do you want? What do you want? Hey ladies, it's me, Diane. Very excited to tell you about this week's date idea. If you live in Atlanta, you have to check out Sip and Scratch. It's a DJ session. You go one-on-one or with your bae. I prefer you go with the bae. It's not that expensive, but make sure you go with someone that you really like getting to know. You get to vibe on a different level and make music. See where your musical mind is at and then go home and have nasty sex.
<laughs> okay, so we are back from Indecisive Diane, and it's time for advice. We only have time for one. Okay. So um, if you have a question that you want read on the show, please email us advice at cocktailspod.com. Medina, will you read the advice you have? Yes. Oh, this one's so long. I'm wondering, should I go to the one from the last one? But okay. <laughs> this one is titled, I want to know what she's talking about. The title is, Help, My Nigga is Boring. Damn. She said, hey, Ooh. y'all. <laughs> well, I'm that's back. good. We got a man here. <laughs> I just Let's said, hey, y'all, I'm back for another question. And yes, I have a therapist, but I think of y'all <laughs> like my older cousins. And uh, oh, I'm wait. glad you said cousins and not aunties because we right? do be sending the bitches to therapy. Y'all need to start to a professional. Then y'all have y'all's heads on straight. So I trust your advice. Well, and you have, we have a man here today to help you. So I'm going to try to make this as short as possible. Me and my boyfriend, we've been together since February, 2021. And I love this man down y'all. Our relationship has truly opened me up to a whole other version of myself and made me realize that as a black man, I do deserve love. He did live like extra oh, L. No, I was really caught off guard because I thought this was from a woman. I did too. Uh, but go ahead. It is, but it is from, from a woman. man. Okay. okay. From a man. Right. Um, and I deserve love, affection, and understanding from another black man. But this man is boring. I have to force <laughs> Wait, him. Wait, this is two men. It's two yeah. men. Got it. I'm understanding. I got okay. It. But the other nigga is boring. The other nigga is boring. I have to force him to go on dates, trips, buy him things, etc. We don't argue a lot, but most of our arguments center around his first answer being no to almost any question I ask him or him returning my question with a million questions that somehow end up with him still saying no or a variation of no. Mm. For context, I'm 24 from the suburbs in Northeast Ohio and grew up with both of my parents in the home. We moved from poor to working middle to middle We moved from poor to working, middle to middle class during my childhood. And while we didn't always have what we needed, we were well cared for and made certain to travel internationally and domestically from around age 10 to 20, even after I graduated high school and went to college. I'm a college graduate from a large PWI and studied at several other institutions, studied abroad for research during my time there. So I still managed to see the world and have experiences building on my childhood experiences. I identify and explain to him when we were still talking as ethically non-monogamous, but mm. still can function within the, con- the uh, confines. confines of a monogamish relationship. Ooh, this is going to be one of them ones Bruh. where we got to be politically correct. I don't <laughs> understand. Okay. Mon- monogamish relationship. Bruh. Group sex. Three if subs, you don't want to leave town. Then this is not your relationship. Ma- yeah, that, I, I already get where it's going. This nigga don't want to leave. Oh, He's wow. 23 from a very rural town in South Carolina and grew up with a single mom and grandparents in the home. He explained that he grew up poor and that his family is still working, uh, still poor working class as we go visit them often together. The first time he had ever been on a plane was a trip we took last year. Sometimes I don't understand when people are saying, you know, he's saying like he knows what he wants, but this person sounds like the opposite of what you're saying. And they sound like they're not open to what you want, because I don't think you have to come from the same thing. But if this person isn't open, what are we talking about? But go ahead. What are we talking about? (laughs) Y'all... Y'all know from my last letter, honestly, oh, this is the nanny, the dude who was fucking the nanny. Y'all know from Mr. our nanny, last letter we didn't told your ass. that I work as a nanny and an entrepreneurial street pharmacist on the side. <laughs> and he works customer service in a grocery store daily. He dropped out of college while we were t- while we were together and doesn't intend on going back. He was strictly monogamous when we started dating and opened and opened up to the idea of monogamish relationship, even though I can tell he still has challenges with it. Why are you still dealing with him? Thanks. Um I live alone and he stays with his twin brother. So while I make more than him, he generally generally has more disposable income than I do. Mm. (laughs) Well, you can't count people's pockets. I don't like when people do this. Okay. I agree. You know what I mean? Just because he's Mm -hmm. not paying rent and you're paying rent. You don't know what he has to do. Their responsibilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, We met through the dating sex apps during COVID in 2020, right when I moved from Ohio to South Carolina for work and started off as, uh, we started off as just fuck buddies for three to four months when he asked to cuff me in January, 2021, to which I said, maybe, and then said, yes, a month later. This caused the first issue in our relationship before it was even, before it was even a relationship because I was seeing other people and had just moved to this. This is so much. It's an essay. It's an essay. Okay. Let's see if I can get to the question because it's just so many details. 
I'm afraid that I didn't spend enough time dating my boyfriend during our talking stage. And even now, it feels like an uphill battle to let me treat him to experiences that he wouldn't otherwise otherwise have known about. I love this man with every fiber in my body and don't want this relationship to end simply because of a difference of upbringing or general demeanor. What should I do about my boring boyfriend? Have y'all ever had a boring nigga and what did y'all do? Sincerely, your Gen Z baby cousin. P.S. Stop talking shit about us Gen Z babies. We love y'all and low-key want to be y'all. Y'all are right. You're right. You open the doors for mental health combos, expressive (laughs) gender, sexualities, and a host of other things now quite... Now, quit being old geezers and help us out as we come Not into our geezers. 30s. Y'all don't fucking listen. That's the motherfucking problem. This is the second thing that you didn't wrote into. Now, sir, well, you go ahead, Rod. Rod, what you got to say before I go off? Well, first thing, I've never had a born nigga. Okay, so... <laughs> Let's start with I that. have. Let's I start have. With have you had a boring nigga? Absolutely. I don't okay. have several. Okay. Uh, all right. So the word boring uh, always sticks out to me when people say that because I've watched people in relationships that say that person was boring, not realizing that they were also boring. Mm. So sometimes mm-hmm. you got to look in the mirror and realize, are you fun? Listen, they now, say sometimes the man you in the are. You so sometimes you born. Are a you, I, th- I hate that. Me and my wife were just talking about that with a couple. We know that I'm like, man, sometimes both people be boring, but like to call the other person boring. Mm-hmm. So make sure that you're not boring. Or second, you're not equally yoked bro, that in part. the way that you said. Right. And mm-hmm. second thing, your ass is 24. Bro, don't spend all your 20s trying to make a nigga unborn if you feel like he's unborn. <laughs> like, move on to somebody you feel like more fun. Mm-hmm. Move to somebody you got more chemistry with. You can go out and have fun and y'all like the same type of dates. They like to travel the way that you do, move the way that you do, date the way that you do. Because what people do, they get stuck in their 20s and they just let somebody ride them from 24 to 30. And then they be on the podcast talking about, man, niggas ain't shit. Nigga, you been with one nigga. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Okay, you don't know. You he wasn't shit, and you wasn't. And, and, and then, and then one of y'all was shit. Now you talking about oh, nigga. Now you a man basher, like nigga. Like if you, you if you been with this person. nigga two years now, it's about to be two years next month, mm. and you know how you know that person. So that dude not finna change. So move on. You young. You got time, and go and keep making. Get back on that app and find some find some find a new nigga, dog. Grind to be popping. Get back on there. Because I know yeah. that's where you at. I will say, because <laughs> if, if you, I agree with what y'all both say. You are saying you're so much fun. Yep. A so much fun person would not settle to be with a boring person. Fact. This person must be fine than a motherfucker. Because I think that's what it is. He fine. But even You get still, stuck on fine ones. Not stuck like this, but I get it. It's like I have been with, I remember there was this one country ass, but he was fine and he was tall. I think he was 6'9". Oh, and six, he was nine, from, God damn, he was Jolly tall Green as fuck. He went to my college. Um, you didn't even like tall men. How did you land that one? I don't Six even nine, Where did you know. find? I mean, it Clark Atlanta. Hard. He was on the basketball team. And mm. this was before I, I've always been a well-traveled person. I've been traveling since I was three years old. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> and um, the way the bougie jumped out on that one. I was three years old. <laughs> Meanwhile, I didn't take a flight. So I was 19. Go ahead. Yeah, but I've <laughs> also live. been a very fun girl my whole life. And so, like I was dating this super country boring nigga and even though he was fine the dick was mediocre he was just fine you know mm. tall niggas just get past this, this nigga know you talk about him go ahead Woo. yeah um he probably he's so boring that he probably don't even know what a podcast is Didn't he trained that. horses he was just very boring um <laughs> Mm. And he, I got to a point where I was like, dang, okay, I still want to deal with him. Not going to go anywhere, not going to do anything serious with him. I got to deal with the other people on the side. Like, if you still want to deal with who you're dealing with, cool. But like, for you to say you're so fun, you, like Rod said, you might not be that fun because I, as a fun person, I can't deal with this. Like, I just can't. Yeah. I'm not going to settle for this. Mm-hmm. That's the same way I feel about people who say, I love to travel and you need to love to travel. And then you get with somebody and they don't have a passport and you still going to deal with them. I'm sorry. That's one of the things where it's like, no, I'm so sorry. I have to be able to travel and you need to like it. I'm not teaching you how to travel. I'm not teaching you how to pack. That's just one of my things. If mm-hmm. you like to have fun, you got to end this. And Department. then this is another thing that I think that a lot of people forget. Mm. You think you're fun. Your fun don't mean that that's his fun because that y'all might like very different things. And if it, y'all don't don't have the same interest or he's not interested in what you're interested mm-hmm. in to even be open to exploring it, you need to move around Facts. or add on to your roster. Goddamn. Build a football team. And Fuck basketball. Build a football team. Get some niggas on the roster. Date properly. I always yeah. tell people that. I said, bro, you need to keep about three people on your squad. Until somebody just becomes a goddamn all-star and makes you cut the rest of the people off. I said it to mm-hmm. men. I said it to women. 
Oh, don't nobody need to be just 100% like waiting on that one egg to throw in the basket. Mm -hmm. You need to have some motherfuckers calling you on the daily until somebody locks your ass in. Because if somebody locks your ass in, they're not going to give you no space. And I'm not saying smother you, but like, hey, man, what we doing this weekend? You and thinking what you about doing Tuesday? They're not saying what we doing nothing Thursday? to you. Hey, I, I got some tickets to the game. You want to pull up? A nigga that wants you gay or straight, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're going to be in your space. I mean, dating is the same, no matter what you like. Your thing is your thing. But... You know what I'm saying? Like, keep it open until somebody knock you off your body, knock, knock you off your feet. You know what I'm saying? Keep it mm -hmm. right. Keep you a roster, my nigga. Now, last time he was fucking, now it was three of them. It was him, the mama, and the daddy. For the child, he was nannying. So we got to be careful of the advice we give him. You be careful out here. You, Wait a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. Go back. He he wrote in a letter before. Did He's he a the nanny. Mama um, I think he did. he did. Yeah, he fucked everybody. He fucked the whole house. All he together. Fucked the whole house. Except it was for the kids. all together. Except for the kids. He didn't fuck Yeah, the not kids. the kids. No, he wasn't. He fucked the like, mama, the daddy, and the son. No, no not just the son. his mom and the daddy. Just the mom and the daddy. He was babysitting the son. He's a nanny. They brought so him he's in nanny to the and the son. And then when they got home from their uh, whatever function they had, they was like, oh, come on upstairs for your bonus. I mean, that's not really how it happened, but basically. No, yeah. that's, that's, how, that's how you envision mm -hmm, it. That's, mm -hmm. that's, like they get back from the award show so and that's how it goes. So he got to both of them down. Well, that obviously ended. I think he's got a new job, and now he's got this boring man, and he probably and he thought the daddy Oh, he was booked a trip for his birthday, and his boyfriend can't come because he can't afford it. This is another reason why I say just pay attention to detail and just date what makes sense. Like, like I don't... And that's, that's a reality of dating is sometimes you can be with somebody who cannot afford the things that you can afford, right? So you have to make a tough decision. Either you're going to mm -hmm. pay for it, or you're going to be okay with not going with them, or you're going to be okay with moving on to another person. They're, the options are there, and they're yours. And he said for Choose Christmas, them. he bought him quite a few gifts, but he's still waiting on his Christmas See, gifts. Don't, you shouldn't be waiting on your gift because you knew the nigga didn't have no money you know, to begin and, with. Okay. And so is it about the gifts, or is it about him? He's boring. He ain't buy you no gifts. He don't Boom. got no money. You miss Papa Boom. from when you was nannying. Damn. You need to end all this shit. And because another thing, when people throw in love, I be feeling like, and I'm not trying to talk about the Gen Z people because my generation be doing it too. We're what? not Gen Z, right? No, okay. we are millennials. Okay. Shh. People talk, people throw out, throw around love. And when you talk about love, it's like, okay, you have I to don't play about that. I word. don't play about that one because it's not you don't say I love you. And then if somebody is poor or somebody it falls short in certain areas, you're just like, and I'm done and I'm done. I cannot like you, but I can still love you. And that's what's going to make me be like, well, I don't like you today, but that's OK, because I love you. I respect hearing y'all say that. And then we're going to work through, through this. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, if you feel Spotting. like you can't do that, you might not really love this person because you don't. all throughout this email. And we didn't even read the whole thing because mm. it was so long. Ooh. And I'm not trying to rag on you and make you feel bad. But you might not really know what love is because you're counting his pockets and you're mm. you're telling mm. us all of the things that you can do and that you can afford and that he can. It's almost a comparison. I have Honestly, learned I ain't heard nothing you liked love, about him. I've learned in love. I made up that he was fine. He's used to him. Oh, that part. That's you're comfortable. Happens. That's why I tell mm. people people get comfortable. They waste their 20s on one person because they get comfortable in being used to them. You, you used don't to call them, yeah. You used to call them when you get off work. You used to hang with them on the weekends. You used to Netflix and chilling with them. Mm. You know what they eat. They know what you eat, and you just get caught in that pattern of like, oh. And then I hate when people get in these bad relationships. And they're like, ain't nothing else out here. You don't know because your ass ain't out here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think you people get stuck waiting in that. on Mr. DoorDash, Ooh. and Listen, it's okay to end your, your relationship because it's not working for Bruh. you anymore. That doesn't make you a bad person. You want somebody that can afford to go on trips when you can go on the trips. They you want somebody that is paying a mortgage or a rent. Find that person, but don't down him because he's trying to get whatever he needs to get together. Or he doesn't want what you want. He might not give a fuck about traveling the world. He likes Ohio. Mm -hmm. He wants to stay there and play with them cows. Get you a flight attendant that work at Spirit. Okay? Yeah. That's, that's mm -hmm. where all the gay ones be. Mm -hmm. That is. <laughs> that all, is. The, all the flight attendants at Spirit be, yeah. be gay dudes. I don't know how they find them jobs. They find them. Yeah. I always be seeing the PE teacher looking girls, but you know. All them studs be working at Spirit too. And, they, and, mm -hmm. and fuck around, don't pay for that bag. They're going to tackle your ass too. Excuse me, sir. See, I like sir, to be on the other side sir. of the airport. I don't want to play with that because it's you always didn't pay for that bag. especially in Philly. Every time I see something going off on Instagram about a spirit flight, it's Atlanta or Philly. Every and I'm time. like, why are y'all so angry? Bro, and they be Where are the peanuts? Well, and the TSA is out of control. I'm like, last time I went, they put a finger in my ass. I'm like, uh-uh, that is not a part of the protocol, man. Ooh. Ooh. You ain't gay. That's crazy to Maybe. me. Maybe. <laughs> fingers and booty holes. But yes, sir. I mean, identify <laughs> some things in yourself because I really yeah. feel like that's the only way this can get fixed. And I hope you get it fixed because I want you to be happy. Move on, dog. I do too. Move on, dog. Next time, I want you to write us a cocktail and tell us about how good it was with 
you know, the next person, not yeah. this one, because this ain't it, baby. He ain't it. He ain't it. And yeah. stop calling us geezers. You know, we. I, well, I'm sensitive. I won't speak from a D. I'm sensitive. Don't call me no geezer. Well, I am a little geezerish. I got my high socks on. I got mine today. on too. And that's why I got my foot tucked. <laughs> While I'm sitting here I'm, uh, I'm the oldest trying to feed room. my. I, I think we might be the same age. <laughs> um, okay, you guys. Um, before we move on to the cocktails, I do want to mention, go to paradiseandvibe.com. If you would like to go to Fiji with me, July 3rd through the 10th, we have a few spots open. This trip is going to be epic. It's going to be life-changing. If you've been wanting to go on a vacation with your mm. bae, go ahead and send him the link so he can pay for it because men are welcome <laughs> to come. Couples are welcome to come. It's going to be fun and you're going to love it there. Don't ask me where Fiji is because I still ain't looked it up. I want to be surprised. French Polynesia. Mm. That way. That way. It's over there. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's over yonder. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. So we're going to move on to cocktails. If you guys would like to send in a cocktail, please send them in to cocktails at cocktailspod.com. I got it right this time. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We only have time for one cocktail, so Rod. Okay. Comedian Rod. Yes. Leo Rod. Leo Rod. Amazing man Rod, because you are a good man. I appreciate that, man. And we're going to tell Savannah. Savannah. Okay, (laughs) tell Savannah. That's a good man. Savannah's man actually wasn't good. He was married to somebody oh, else. Oh shit! Okay. He's in the bad spot. Joke. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was. Oh, That's yeah. not you. Was that ain't situation. you. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. You got a wife that you stand with. Yeah, not stand, look, I'm stick beside. Period. Her. Stick mm-hmm. beside. I didn't. I, I just stepped to a couple niggas about it too. Huh? Hey, mm-hmm. just, I, I don't get period. fucked up. Go ahead. Now I don't know if your cocktail is going to be about you and your love of your life, or is okay. it going to be a, a a throwback cocktail? Either what way, you got for it. us? I like it. either way. Uh, my you cocktail. gotta tell us. Yeah. Do y'all story or was a weird dating story? <laughs> about it could be sexy, weird, romantic, embarrassing. Funny. A sto- a dating story that the proposal. Mm. How you knew you wanted to marry her? That might be a good one. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was gonna tell an old story, but go ahead. Oh okay. no, we, we old story one. would be good. Whichever one is better. Whichever one you've told the story to, and people was like, "Nah, nigga." Nah, nigga. <laughs> okay, so I'm at this game night. Okay, at this uh at this penthouse uh mm, downtown game Buckhead. Night. Like, yeah. I'm curious to know. Could have been there if it was it's a game around. Like, this is way, way before my wife. This is way back. This is my single day. And I'm sitting there, and I get this random girl, this beautiful, cute little girl. Uh, we become space partners. We kicking ass. Wham, 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 wham. You know, we busting. Mm-hmm. Everybody sit down and get their ass put off. I'm a space guy. So I'm like, oh, she's like, yo, I'm about to go. I said, yo, let me walk to your car. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm about to try to get the number or whatever, right? So I walk her down. I'm like, yo, man, uh, I said, uh, let me get your number. I said, I got some tickets to a Braves game on Tuesday. Now, I meet her on a Saturday. So I got some tickets to a Braves game on Tuesday. I'd love for you to come with me or whatever. She's like, for real? So I get the number. Everything's official. It's great, right? So Monday, I'm going to do, I'm not going to blow you up because I don't know you like that yet. I'm not mm-hmm. that good morning, beautiful, good morning, queen guy. I don't know that's you. That's good. I'm going mm-hmm. to confirm that we're going out and then we're going to talk there. That's, that's, that's my, I'm old school with that. So, you know, these niggas be like, good morning, beautiful. How's your day? You don't care how her day is. You don't know her yet. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Monday comes, she texts me. Uh, it's like, hey, what you doing? I said, I'm actually about to take a late lunch or whatever. It's like five o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, the time I'm working at La Cordon Blue, she asked me, like, where you work? I said, I work at La Cordon Blue. She's like, oh shit, I live right down the street from there. She's like, don't leave yet. I'm gonna come pick you up. I'm like, wow, that's really nice. She's okay, this is sweet of her. You know, she's gonna pick me up. Wow. She's like, she's like yeah. She's like, yeah. She's like, let me guess, you going to the old Charlie's. I like, cause it's old Charlie's right across the street from mm-hmm. La Cordon Bleu. I said, like, that's exactly where I'm going. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, bet, I'm gonna come with you. Now, I'm going to Old Charlie's for a purpose. They have a happy hour that is from four to eight, mm-hmm. where some of these uh, things on the menu are that are normally twenty five and above. They're now seven ninety nine between mm-hmm. these hours. That's why I'm going. Mm-hmm. So when they bring the big menu, I throw the big menu back. I want the small menu. I'm there for the happy hour shit. That's why I'm Period. there because I'm going to eat this little meal and I'm gonna take my ass back to work. I'm coming to get the chicken parmesan and head it back to work. Mm-hmm. She gets the big menu. Uh oh. She, she getting steak, what? shrimp. She done got a goddamn dessert. She done got three martinis. Now we're sitting there. We have never gone out before. Now as she's sitting there. She's telling me, like, you know, like, so what are you up to? I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm working, you know, this and third. I'm about to get back into comedy because I had quit comedy after my divorce. I had quit entertainment, stopped going on acting auditions, whatever. I'm just all corporate. I said, like, yeah, I'm about to get back into it. You know, I'm in a good place. You know, but she's like, yeah, I'm in a good place too. I just got out of a relationship and she's crying. Oh, Tears no. are coming out of her eyes. This is our first time. You know, I just got a relationship. Me and was living together, but I'm like in a good place right now. And she's knocking these martinis back. And we just talked and about how strong martinis are. I'm like, hey, yo, 
um, you know Talk I can see you. Though. I can breakup. see you. Like I'm looking at you. <laughs> There's tears coming out of both sockets. I'm watching you. Like what? What? Are you okay? What are we mm-hmm. talking she's about? Like, no, no, I'm fine. You know, and she's drinking a back, and then the dude's like, "Yo, y'all ready for the bill?" And she's like, "No, actually, I want a brownie Sunday." Oh, this bitch is turning up. You know what I'm saying? This is out of control. Well, last time you ate, bitch. Right, I had my lunch and break. She, and she a little bitty something. This is a little. She's she's small, short and small. Like right. And then I'm like, I bet. So now I'm like, ah, it's gonna be a situation. You know what I'm saying? Because here come the waiter. You know, this nigga come to me in slow motion because I know. We finna have a problem. Because you already know. I already know what time it is. I'm not. You know what I'm saying? So he comes, he's like, you know, it's going to be one ticket or two. I'm like, it's going to be two. <laughs> because I definitely can't hear for the happy hour menu. That's why I'm here. My, my yeah. tab going to be nine seventy five. Her bill was $92 for a lunch break. She's pissed. Wow. For real. I was like, and Yo. drunk. She's Bro, pissed, pissed and drunk. And drunk. That's Man, the first, worst combo. First thing. You just cried in front of me about your ex-boyfriend. Like, on our first time hanging out. That's, that's the memory Call I always have. Call that nigga and ask you for some money. Like, ma'am, you deserve to pay for that steak and shrimp and those martinis and that brownie sundae that you barely ate. Yeah, so, yeah, your shit $92. You should have got the small menu like I got. She's <laughs> She pissed. She's pissed. Because I'm, like, yeah. I'm sure there was a little snack on there. Oh, a little bro. chicken tender. Bro, chicken tender, anything you could eat. She barely, she was like, like snacking on stuff. Mm, this steak is overcooked. Uh, this shrimp ain't right. Uh, this brownie, she's one of them. I'm like, oh, you and this bitch act like you from straight from Iron Chef somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Mm-mm. So, <laughs> man, we are in <laughs> Old Charlie. We are in Old Charlie. Oh, Charlie's was only Re- in the mall. So the Me fact too, that she was cutting up like, yeah, sandwich. Yeah, I didn't bro, know it was a whole bro, restaurant. Like, bro, bring it down some. So she's pissed. And I thought she was a real man. I was like, I am a real man. I had a plan. I had a plan to come here and spend less than $15. That's what I, I came here for. <laughs> that was my plan. Okay, now. I, I, at the Braves game, we finna go all the way up. You, know you still I, win? I still went to the Braves game. You with know? her? I went no. with her to the Braves oh, game. I did. You are nice. because I. Did she like, stay away? Ma'am, you can't. Oh, she stayed. She stayed. She came to the Braves game, but she was born. She's actually born, which is hilarious that we talk about that. But she was. Mama. I took a picture of her next to the field, and she spent the whole game like editing and telling her homegirls, like, look at me. I'm at the game. Because Instagram was new back then. It was like new. Uh, so that's when everybody was trying to post a little post and show where they was and shit like that. And it's like, man, this game is awesome, man. Like, I like you. You got a good vibe. I said, like, how would you know? You haven't been here the whole time. Okay, and you I on the phone. Talk, yeah, and I haven't talked to her since, so that was strange to me. Yep, that was, that was my, that's my content. I hope she learned her lesson. I don't she know. did. I haven't talked to her since. I'm telling you right now, she, she did. She probably did that same thing at seen. least 15 more times, but maybe one of those times. I mean, she, got over, she probably got over that dude eventually. She probably got over him eventually, but she wasn't over him yet. She wasn't. It wasn't time. That baby <sighs> was still bleeding. Mm. She told me everything. I knew everything. I knew his name. I knew where they lived. I knew it all of It was like you with that girl in the was, lingerie. I don't even Look know at I, karma. See, mm. you know what? Don't do that. Okay. <laughs> see, see, same. see how it came I was full drunk circle. And you high. had your experience. Yeah. And she had, yeah. But she didn't She didn't go to sleep on nothing. Though. I went to sleep. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know how mm. much I was talking. So don't. She stayed <laughs> up putting up. I was, damn. I had to go back to work after the experience. And I'm like, damn, do I really want to take her to this Braves game? I could just take somebody else. But you know, I, I took her though. I went, I went ahead and took her. It's all good. I kept my word. <laughs> Rod, thank you Good. so much for joining us on no, Cocktails. Thank you for the invite, yes. man. This was great. Thank you for I coming. Let you. everybody know where they can find you if you have something going on. Oh, shout out to you. You just were on SNL. Behind the scenes on SNL. Oh, yes, I'm still going to say you was on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, I got cool with uh, Kenan Thompson's manager, a uh, lady mm-hmm. by the name of Sharif Buchanan. Uh, she seen me at a comedy show, uh, put me in this competition that I won. And then uh, so Kenan invited me to come behind the scenes on Saturday Night Live. It was amazing. We was out in New York. A lot of special guests was there. Dave Chappelle was there. Eric uh, Thomas was there. Toby Wingate was there. Uh, Mark Cuban was there. Justin Timberlake was a special guest host. Uh, Jimmy Fallon was there. And we got to hang out at the show backstage and sit right there. Like, Star right, started right, Yeah, we was in the building, in the green room, came in, kicking it. And then they took us to the dinner and uh, paid for everything. It was it was really cool, man. We hung out to about 6 o'clock in the morning. Oh, that's ball. so Ooh, much. What did y'all eat? Uh, we went to this place called Zuma. It's really dope. So check that out when you go to New York. Zuma yes, got some I'm great food. that up. And then we went like to some to private party. Feet. I don't know what it's called. It looked like it wouldn't even be a party. And there was like a weird door with like a, a like graffiti a all over. It like something that was closed. But then you mm. knock on the door and you get a pass where you go in. And it was jumping. Oh, you jumping. was having it's fun. Like lit. It was out of control. It was crazy. So that was, that was a dope experience. Where can everybody find you? You can find me on all social media. My name is Rod Minger. Minger spelled like finger with an M. That's just the <laughs> best way to explain. If you can't spell finger, your ass need to get off social media. Um, yes. I'm on tour with Carl Anthony Payne from the Martin Show. You have uh, any shows coming up in Atlanta? Oh, no, I just did Atlanta two weeks mm. ago. I was at the Atlanta. I, I, I sent you a, I think you, you were out of town. I, yeah. wasn't in town. So I was at the Atlanta Comedy Theater. Uh, so the next few are out of town. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the next time I'm in Atlanta, man, I, I always drop it on Instagram. Where are your next few cities? Uh, so I go to where am I going to? I go to Birmingham, I go to Charlotte, I go to uh, Memphis and Chicago. So those are the next few. 
Okay. So that's where I'll be. But unless I'm in Atlanta, I'm always posting on Instagram. It's always at the end of my skits. So follow my page, Rob Mingo. That's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Christian Mingles. It's Rob Mingo, all that. <laughs> uh, pull up. Let me know what's up. Check out the videos. Tell me what you think. Comment. I have comment back. Let's hang out and uh, and keep rocking with the cocktails, man. This is lit. Thank you so much. This Thank is lit, you. man. This is lit. You guys, make sure that you continue to... Um, Support us by going to I'mCuriousToKnow.com. Mm -hmm. You can purchase merch there. You can purchase a game. Mm. And then also sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cocktails. On Instagram, we're at Cocktails Podcast. I'm at Kiki Said So. I'm at Coffee Bean Dean. And Rod got us a gift, so I'm about to open it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, just brought us some. Let's ain't, see what we got. Ain't no Birkin oh. bag. Just, just. <laughs> This is oh, sorry. That wasn't supposed to be in there. Sorry about that. This is our juice. Offense, I didn't put what that in there. What we got? What we got? What we got? I brought the merch in here, man. You know, oh, I like to spread, merch. I like, I like the, I like to spread the hilarious cheer in here, man. Come on, merch and a little, a yeah. little crown. I love presents. I love people come with presents. Yeah. That oh, was a little crown apple. Yeah, I just want to a little shot that before the show was talking. I thought y'all were in the beginning, man. So, you know. Oh, cheers. Hilarious. Hilarious. You know what I'm saying? Shirt now. Yeah, man. Thank you, you so much. Thank, Thank y'all for having you. me. Now I'm about man. to tell my mama to stop trying to get us to go on carnival cruises and check out the Disney if she think I'm coming. No, the so Disney's we drop them babies off. Yeah, you still get a discount? No, the discount oh, is dead. Okay. The discount is dead. So it. Well, bye, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> discount is out of here. Bye. 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 Bye.